Dear students, today we are going to discuss about Calcutta University Education Commission or Sadler Commission. Objectives set for today's program are first to get acquainted with the cause of appointing the Calcutta University Education Commission, to know about the chief features or recommendations of the Calcutta University Education Commission, to become familiar with the implementation of Calcutta University Education Commission and to get an insight into the merits and limitations of Calcutta University Education Commission. Britishers came to India during the Mughal period in 1680, primarily for trade and commerce. On the downfall of Mughal Empire, the British consolidated their hold and established East India Company under a charter. The company acquired political dimensions, yet retained its original trade character in earlier days. Company ruled India for over 150 years, bringing in its wake the best of Western literature, science, culture and technology. The English people strengthened their position first as traders and then turned as rulers. During the intervening period, they began to spread their religious Christianity in the land. They started educational institutions in all the towns of India. East India Company made education as a means of publicity and religion. Bishop came to India and used to call himself Western Brahman and followed most of the manners of Hindu sannyasi. East India Company established various schools and colleges and for the first time in June 3rd, 1814, announced to spend about 1 lakh of rupees for Indian system of education, especially Hindu system of education. British organized education in India in various periods. First period spreads from 1800 to 1853, then second period from 1854 to 1900, then third period from 1901 to 1919, then fourth period from 1920 to 1947. This modern education system and structure did not come into being all of a sudden or abruptly, but it is a result of gradual evolution. Thus, from time to time, various commissions were appointed for the growth and progress of English education in India. So today we are going to take one such commission that is the Sadler Commission or Calcutta University Education Commission which dates from 1917 to 1919. The resolution of educational policy 1913 had recommended that a university should be established for each province, the teaching activities of the universities should be encouraged and that the colleges located in the Mufusil towns should be developed into teaching universities in the due course. But no action could be taken by the government, primarily because of the outbreak of the Great World War. In 1917, the government of India appointed the Calcutta University Commission, which is also known as the Sadler Commission, after the name of its chairman, Dr. Michael Sadler, the Vice-Chancellor of the Leeds University. Modus operandi. The commission examined secondary education as it formed the basis for the university education. It visited all the university centers and after 17 months submitted its report in 13 volumes, giving a critical and comprehensive survey of educational problems. Although it deals with the Calcutta University only, the problem that it studied were more or less common to other Indian universities. This report had greatly influenced the subsequent course of secondary and higher education in country. The commission had six members besides the chairman. Students, now we will discuss about the terms of reference of the commission. First was to enquire into the conditions and prospects of the University of Calcutta and to consider the questions of a constructive policy in relation to the question it presents. 
Essential features or the main recommendations of the Sadler Commission can be studied under the following headings. First, recommendation related to the Calcutta University. Second, recommendations related to all the universities in India. Third, recommendations related to the Muslim education. Fourth, recommendations related to teacher education. Fifth, recommendations related to technology. Sixth, recommendations related to professional and vocational education. Seventh, recommendations related to modern Indian language. And eighth, recommendations related to secondary education. Now we will discuss these recommendations one by one. First, recommendations related to Calcutta University and its problems. The Commission thoroughly examined the problems of Calcutta University and reached the conclusion that the size of university had become abnormally large and the number of students and the colleagues affiliated to it had increased too much to be efficiently dealt with under a single university. Commission put forth three suggestions in this respect. First, there should be established a teaching and residential university at Dhaka. Second, the teaching resources should be organized in Calcutta in such a way as to create a real teaching university. Third, the development of Mafusal colleagues, colleagues outside the three East India Company capitals of Bombay, Calcutta and Madras should be taken in such a way as to ensure the encouragement of gradual rise of university centers at a few places by concentrating all possible resources for higher education on them. Recommendations related to all the universities. First, important recommendation on university education. Intermediate classes should be separated from the universities and the curriculum spreading over three years should be prescribed for the degree of BA. The stage of admission to the university was to be intermediate and not matriculation examination. Then second, intermediate colleagues should be established for the sake of completing the first stage. These colleagues should conduct teaching in arts, science, medicine, engineering, education, agriculture and commerce. Third, a separate high school and intermediate board should be formed in every province consisting of representatives of the government universities, high school and intermediate colleges for the sake of managing secondary education. The board should be made free from the control of the Department of Education. Then fourth, the mother tongue should be used as a medium of instruction in intermediate colleges. Second is the internal administration and organization of the universities. The commission expressed their general views upon the internal administration and organization of the universities as follows. First, the teachers of the universities should be given more powers with a view to remove unnecessary state control over them. Second, regulations governing the working of universities should be made less rigid. Third, provision should be made for the institution of the honors course as distinct from past course for the sake of abler students. Then fourth, the duration of degree courses should be three years after the intermediate stage. Then fifth, for the internal administration of the university, a representative court in place of senate and a small executive council in place of syndicate should be set up. Sixth, a special committee should be constituted for making appointments to the professorships and readerships. The committee should include external experts also. Then seventh, an academic council and board of studies should be set up to settle academic questions pertaining to the course of study, examinations, degrees and research works, etc. Then eighth, different faculties should be created. Ninth, a full-time and salaried vice-chancellor should be appointed. Then tenth, a director of physical trainings 
should be appointed to pay attention to the health and physical welfare of the students. Then 11th, the Department of Education in the universities should be established and education included as a subject for the BA, pass course and intermediate course. Twelfth, it also recommended the establishment of an inter-university board for coordinating the activities of the various Indian universities. Then third one is the recommendations related to Muslim education. First, the Muslims should be provided all educational facilities in view of their backward state in the field. Second, it provided for organizing Parda schools for girls up to the age of 16 years. Third, it empowered the Calcutta University to institute a special board of women's education and set up special curriculum according to the educational needs of women. Then fourth, recommendation related to teachers' training. The commission recommended that the output of trained teachers should be substantially increased. Then recommendation related to technology. The commission observed its important and indeed a necessary function of the university to include applied science and technology in its courses and to recognize their systematic and practical study by degrees and diplomas. Then sixth, recommendations related to professional and vocational training. The commission recommended that the universities must provoke provision for the efficient training of personnel needed for the industrial development of the country. Then seventh, recommendations related to the modern Indian language. The Calcutta University Commission 1917 stated, we are emphatically of the opinion that there is something unsound in a system of education, which leaves a young man at the conclusion of his course unable to speak or write his own mother tongue fluently and correctly. It's thus beyond controversy that a systematic effort must henceforth be made to promote the serious study of the vernaculars in the secondary schools, intermediate colleges, and in the university. The elaborate scheme recently adopted by the University for the Critical, Historical, and the Comparative Study of the Indian Vernaculars for the ME examination is but the keeping stone of an edifice of which the base has yet to be placed on a sound foundation. And it is only when such a structure has been completed that Bengal will have a literature worthy of the greatness and civilization of its people. Then eighth, recommendations related to secondary education. The commission recommended that reforms at the stage of secondary education be essential for the improvement of university education. In this regard, it made the following recommendations. First, separation of intermediate classes from the universities. Second, establishment of intermediate colleges. Third, formation of the separate high schools and intermediate boards. Fourth, use of mother tongue as the medium of instruction. Then is the implementation of the recommendations. There were important political developments in the wake of Montagu Chelmsford reforms 1919, under which universities were transferred to provincial government. Besides several problems arising out of the consequences of the First World War had to be given priority. Hence, the recommendations could not be put to immediate implementation. As the demand for compulsory primary education was increasing and many provinces passed compulsory education acts. The number of schools imparting secondary education were increased. English remained as a medium of instruction. Vocational courses and training colleges for teachers were started. Several universities came into being. The following universities were created. Mysore University, Patna University, Banaras Hindu University, Aligra Muslim University, Lucknow University, Dhaka University, 
عثمانیہ یونیورسٹی الہ آباد یونیورسٹی لیڈی ہارڈنگس کالج ڈیلی ایس این ڈی انسٹیٹیوٹ پونا بندرکر انسٹیٹیوٹ فار اورینٹل ریسرچ اینڈ دا انسٹیٹیوٹ فار فلاسفی دا ورکنگ کیپیسٹی آف دی کیلکیٹا یونیورسٹی واز انکریزڈ اٹ واز انگیج ان ٹیچنگ اینڈ ریسرچ دا اسکالٹی آف ہائر ایجوکیشن واز امپروڈ دا کیلکیٹا یونیورسٹی بیکیم اے ماڈل فار دا ادر یونیورسٹیز دین از دا ایویلویشن آف دا کمیشن اکارڈنگ ٹو اے این باسو دا رپورٹ آف دا کمیشن کنٹینز دا موسٹ کمپریہنسو اینڈ اتھارٹیٹو اسٹڈی آف دا انڈین ایجوکیشن سسٹم فرام دا سیکنڈری اسٹیج ٹو دا یونیورسٹی اٹس دیئر فار کوائٹ نیچرل دیٹ دے ہیو گریٹلی انفلوئنسڈ دا سبسیکوینٹ کورس آف سیکنڈری اینڈ ہائر ایجوکیشن ان دا کنٹری ان دا ورڈس آف آرتھو میتھیو دا رپورٹ آف دا کیلکیٹا یونیورسٹی کمیشن ہیز بین a constant source of suggestion and information. Its significance in the history of Indian education has been incalculable. When we look at the present educational scenario, we find that some of the important features find their mention in the Sadler Commission report. The beginning of the interaction of the new pattern of education that is 10 plus 2 plus 3 in 1975 has been hailed as a landmark in the reforms of education in India. It may be recalled that the 12 years of schooling and 3 years of degree courses were recommended by the Sadler Commission 1917 to 1919. In this sense, the Sadler Commission may be said to be the forerunner of the present national educational structure or the forerunner of the new pattern of education that is 10 plus 2 plus 3 pattern. Now we will discuss about the merits of Calcutta University Commission. First, the government accepted the recommendations. Second, other universities were benefited from the recommendations pertaining to Calcutta University. Third, university became the center of teaching, research, and providing degrees after examinations. Fourth, the burden of secondary education was transferred to the boards of secondary education. Fifth, residential universities were established. Sixth, teachers training departments came into being in the universities. Seventh, Pardha schools were opened and special boards of women education were established. Now, we will discuss about the limitations of Calcutta University Commission. First, many new programs were recommended, but these were found to be too ahead of the prevailing situation. For example, the Calcutta University was modeled on the pattern of Cambridge and Oxford, but conditions in India were different. Similarly, Provincial Board of Education was much ahead of the times. Then second, Special education for Muslims and not for the backward classes was likely to sow the seeds of communalism. And third, a dual system of education was created. Teaching of intermediate college was done by the universities and control and inspection were carried only by the secondary boards. Thus, we can conclude that the reaction of the bureaucrats of the colonial power to expert reports had been by and large negative, so was the case with the Sadler report. There is no doubt that the recommendations of the Calcutta University not only reshaped the character of the existing universities in India, but showed the lines on which future universities in India would develop. The greatest contribution of the Calcutta University Commission to the university education in India, however, lay in freeing it from the governmental shackles imposed on it by the Curzon's Indian University Reform Act of 1904 to 1905. Henceforth, the universities in India were to enter an era of freer growth and development. The process of university autonomy and democratization of the higher education in India may have said to begin with the recommendation of the Calcutta University Commission. However, the wind of change that has started blowing became evident 
when the government accepted the recommendations of the Calcutta University Education Commission and tried to implement them. That was all about Calcutta University Education Commission. Hope you have understood.